Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another WordPress chick video. I'm Kim Doyle, the WordPress chick. And I'm super excited about this because you are looking at the new homepage for my site. I just took this live last night and I built this with a new plugin called the Beaver Builder. So that's what I wanna show you because <laughs> I have gone through a ridiculous amount of iterations of a uh, new site layout, new just homepage, just playing with it, thinking new themes and uh, found this, fell in love with it and got it done way quicker <laughs> than the six to seven months I've been doing everything else. All right, so let's go ahead and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you what the Beaver Builder is, uh, how I created this page. And then I've got another page I'm working on that I've listed in the post, this new resources page. So I'll give you a brief overview if we've got time for that um, as well. So first, once you install the plugin, just so you know, the only thing you need to do, uh, here's my post I'm working on, um, but it's simply under uh, settings and then you come down to page builder. Okay, and so you're just gonna put your license in. That's all you need to do for that. So what we'll do is from here, you can see in the top, I've got this option for page builder. So when you go to create a new page, let's just do that so you can see it. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll pull it up from the dashboard here. So this home page, so if you go to create a new page, you're gonna to need to title the page, save as draft, and then go ahead and you're going to select the page builder. So let's go in here and I'll show you a little bit more about what I mean. So you'll see that this is actually using the page builder. So what I did is I just created the page, selected save draft, obviously it's been published now, but then I selected, see what happens if you click text editor, it pulls a whole page in, which we're not gonna do that. <laughs> um, but you're, you need to edit this with the page builder. So this is interesting, <laughs> having that um, all be done, that it was able to revert it pretty quickly. <clears throat> okay, I am gonna go kinda quick because I think I'm gonna do some webinars where we can do this uh, live. Sorry about the pop-up. Um, so let's start with what makes the Beaver Builder so unique. So I'm gonna come up to the top right corner and we're gonna click on templates. And the Beaver Builder comes with two, well, yeah, I would say two sets of default templates, but you can also create your own. You can see you can do a blank page template, create your own, and then you can save it as a template. So what you're looking at right now are the home page templates. And I believe this hope template is, uh, I'm 99% sure that's what I used on this. I have to double check. Um, but so if I scroll down, you can see all of the different options for home page templates. And I know that some of these have a slider. I'm thinking one of them as a video, I apologize. I have not played with all of them. Uh, and then we're gonna look at the content pages. So look, you've got this about us, our services, uh, and this is the template that I'm using for a new resources page. So I'm gonna show you that. You've got a photo portfolio, design, business contact, FAQs, personal, meet the team, blog, blog grid, I mean, blog gallery. There's, <laughs> I just love this. So what's great is that once you select your template, you just load it and that's what I have here. Now I did need to add a snippet of code. Thank you, Jonathan Perez um, at Surefire Web Services for that little snippet of code to the style sheet because I am still using the minimum theme for Genesis by StudioPress. And what happens is that the builder will automatically inherit the, the content width, the content container and so what I needed to do, had I not added that, this image would not be full width. So that's what I needed to do for that. And we can do uh, more of a deep dive into that in a webinar or something. But so I'm gonna hover over this and I wanna show you how easy this was to create. So you can see as soon as I put my mouse over this, I've got this blue highlighted area, right? And this is a row. And the options come with, oops, sorry. So you can move it, reorder it. The wrench is to edit. This is to duplicate it. Sorry, I will not touch those again. And then of course the X is to delete it. So what I did for this section is I simply clicked on the row settings. And here's the other thing I love. You can move this around, <laughs> which makes it even that much easier to do the visual editing, right? Cause you see what's happening live. So it's full width. And by the way, they do have tool tips throughout. So you can use that super easy, full width, it's fixed. Um, so you can see with that, um, there's a couple options here. I don't have text in this. I'm simply using this, this row for the background image, right? So I've got that here. 
it's not going to repeat. Um, I've got the position and so you can play with all of this stuff too, but we want to leave it center bottom because what I did is I picked a template that I knew I could simply replace the image. I didn't want to get into because I liked the layout, right? Um, you can do a border fill, all that stuff. And then of course advanced, you can come in here and you can play with the margins and the padding. So I was doing this with the bottom and you know what? I think maybe let's pull in the top a little bit. So as you can see, I'm editing this live. And so if I leave it at 90 right for the top and I've already played with the bottom, the left and the right margins, I'm leaving alone, uh, the padding, excuse me. So let's go ahead and save that. So those are done. So up again to the top right, if you click on add content, these are the different types of content that you can add. So to start with, we are using the rows, right? And so you can put content within a row. And I think the best way to do this is you can actually demo the plugin live on the Beaver Builder site, which is why I was like, I have to have this. Um, so if you want, so what I've done here, sorry about this guys, is these are two columns. And there's a couple things I could have done. Like I could have just done one column and played with the margin and padding and stuff, but this was much quicker for me. So what I did is I've got the one row and then I wanted the two columns, right? So if I were to drop this here, I would then get these two containers. And so you see where this little blue dotted box is? Um, I don't know what's gonna, is that gonna drop it in? Yeah, I did this yesterday. So here's a better example and I'll just remove this. So what's cool is that if you drag over the two columns, you don't actually have to drag the single row first. It'll automatically put it into a row for you, but let's go ahead and remove that. So I'm gonna open this up. So then what I did, once I put the columns in place, I knew that I wanted just text here and then I used, this is an HTML widget simply, well, module, excuse me, because I wanted to use a lead box. So when you click on it, the lead box opens and I'll show you what I mean with that. So that's what opens up, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the heading and the options here. So here's your title. I could have this link out, I didn't want to. The style, so you can dic dictate the colors, easy for me to say. So you can play with that. By default, it was set to white. I knew I wanted it aligned left. Let's move this. Um, the HTML tag, it's an H1 tag. And what's gonna happen is that whatever your default settings are in, um, in your site, it will automatically inherit that style. So I knew th that was fine, right? The fonts match, it inherits the style of my site. So I didn't need to worry about that. What I did do is I played around with the font size. So just for fun, let's take this up to like 68 and you can see how big it is. Boom, it's kind of obnoxious. Uh, so let's go back down. And that's what I love about this is you can edit it live and see what's going on. And then advanced, of course, you can play with the margin here. You can also have this text be animated. I know I didn't want that. Okay, then again, this is an HTML module. So if we come up to add content, you'll find that under the advanced modules right here, because that way you can copy and paste any HTML into this. And so this is actually a lead box and that's how I did that. And so you can see what that looks like. And look at this, I have to tell you, most things that allow you to copy and paste HTML, it's usually just sort of more like the text widget in WordPress. And this is like all official code. <laughs> um, and again, more of the stuff that you can play with. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. This section, so it's one row, and if we edit it, all I did was make it full width, fixed. I selected the background to be a color. So look at all these things that you can do, by the way. Not too shabby. Um, and I used the green. Opacity doesn't really matter because it's a white background. So no matter if you, you know, the page beneath is white, it's just gonna, uh, look the same. No border. Same thing, right? So you're hopefully you're getting the, the idea with this. And then this is simply a headline. So this is a heading, right? So it's an H1. Here you go. I didn't link it. H1 custom. I played with the font size here. Mobile structure, by the way, this is totally responsive. Um, I've left all that alone and I have looked. I should double check and do some screenshots on my phone. Okay, this is one of the things, the next few elements, and I'm going kind of quick because this is getting really long, uh, but the next few elements, 
what I want to show you, so this is one row where each of these things are sitting, right? But what's really cool is this is simply the Genesis featured page widget. So if we come back up to add content on the right, and so you'll see the row layouts, you've got the basic modules, advanced modules, which there's just a bunch of stuff in here. It's super cool. Sorry about that. But then here are all your WordPress widgets. So everything that you have access to within the site uh, for your sidebars and regular widget areas, you can also pull into the uh, Beaver Builder. So this, if we just click on this, you can see that this is the Genesis featured page. Same elements. Um, again, you can do a custom CSS class if you want. You can animate it, whatever you want to do. But I love that I didn't have to recreate that, that I could already take something I was familiar with using and drop it in here. These I actually just created images and you definitely could dig deeper and do, you know, a background with an icon and all that stuff. I wanted to get this up quickly, which is why this is here. And then just what I did is I made sure that the images are named with a relevant alt tag. Um, and then they link to the right page. So that was super easy there. They're just all the same size. And again, by using the two columns, it lined up correctly. Latest podcast episode. Again, this is just a featured widget. Um, and then here I did a row heading and again, Genesis featured uh, widget. And what I did with this, um, if you're not sure, because I'm still playing around with a lot of styling on the homepage, but one of the things with Genesis is that if you want to make sure that these show up in, um, in a consistent manner, meaning this is the most recently published. So after I publish this post today, the uh, Beaver Builder will be here, then My Year in Review, and then the Thrive Content Builder. So what you do is you need to offset the posts. So the first widget, it's showing one post and I don't want it to offset it, meaning show the most recent. The second widget, sorry about that, I want it to offset it by one. So it's like go back one, right? And then the same thing for uh, the third widget, it's offset by two, just so you can see that and understand how that works. Another great thing is they do have, uh, there's a call to action. And I'll be tweaking this because I just took the same code, just a straight HTML code. So what happens is this opens up into just a very generic form. So I'll have to edit this. But if we wanted to pull this in a little bit, let me show you. So this again is where we're gonna come and we're gonna play with, um, let's see, so style. I just wanna see if there's anything I'm missing in here. You can also adjust all your hover colors too. So the background hover of this is teal. Let's just take a look at that. See? Nice and clean, super pretty. Um, let's go to advanced. So you'll see the left and the right. So if we come in, let's go like 220, just so you can see where things are lining up. So I'm pulling those each in a little bit more. Let's just go 250. And it's funny because what happens, let's go ahead and save this. Um, I'm gonna publish this really quick so that you can see. Um, and when you publish the page, it's simply gonna take me to the live page, right? And then if we wanted to see what this looks like in terms of responsiveness, is this gonna, there we go, cooperate. <laughs> Clearly someone's testing a new pop-up. Um, what was happening is this was getting really squished, but at the same time, you know, you wanna, what is the most ideal? I'll probably go back, because this just gets a little more goofy. But here's a way to test the responsiveness, by the way. So you can see how awesome this thing is. Woo! I'm totally making myself dizzy. All right, this is getting super long. Let's just, uh, I wanted to show you really quick the resources page and then uh, I'm done. <laughs> so let's come over to pages and I'm going to pull up the new page that hopefully should go live uh, in the next week. And the reason it is, um, taking a little bit longer is because of the amount of content that needs to go into all these different pages. So this is the default content template for our services. And all I've done, this is called a call out and you would find the call out right here. But all I did is come into each of these sections, each of these modules, I should say. Um, and I'm gonna show you how easy this is to use. I edited the text, I changed colors and I just changed the link and the button colors. I mean, truly it's that easy. So 
You've got the heading tag. Again, it's going to inherit your styles. I wanted it centered. Um, and it, you can also play with the size of this. So if we want to go 28, you'll see that the word plugins is going to go bigger. See? Actually, the 28 looks pretty good, but I'll come back and do it all at once. The image, another thing, I'm such a dork about icons. Like, who doesn't love icons, right? Check this out. You can come in and I'm not going to scroll because it's totally going to make me dizzy. Um, but there's font awesome, font awesome, and I think they've added another one recently. Um, you, this is where we want this to go above the heading, the position of the icon. And again, this whole style was set as a default. So if you change the size of this, watch this. Let's say we go to 100 here. Wait till you see how much bigger the circle gets, and it just does it for you. There we go. And now this looks really, that looks better to me on this screen because it's a 24 inch monitor, but I don't know, that might just look obnoxious. Um, okay, actually, I didn't wanna close this just yet. I am getting so wordy, but let's come over to the call to action. I want this to link to a plugins page. Go in a new window, go in a new window. I want it to open in a new window, way to talk. Um, I've created a button, the button's gonna say read more. I could put an icon on the button. I don't want to, I did not mean to click that. Um, here's our background, our hover. You guys get the picture. Um, same thing, you can create all this custom styles and whatnot for you. Um, but let's go ahead and save and publish because this is getting uber wordy. Let me just publish so we can see this. And then um, each of these things will click through once all the content <laughs> is here. And what I may do in the meantime is, I'm trying to think, do I have these linking to, because I have content for all of these. It's just a matter of, yeah, pulling it all into one place. Um, but I have enough posts on plugins, so it's, you know, it'd be very easy to pull in, uh, just create a, the category page for plugins, but I want it to be more, um, resourceful than making people read through stuff. Anyways, so that's it. That is my first quick review of the Beaver Builder. I absolutely love this thing. I think that, um, if you want to get a site up that, that looks great, functions well is this is just hands down i'm gonna probably use this on as many sites as possible love it anyways any questions holler uh in the meantime go check out uh the beaver builder the wpchick.com forward slash beaver builder